Hello everybody, we are ready for top 4. Here you can see our bracket on screen just showing up. And we just had an exciting game between Ross Cotton. Um, he took down Sam Epps, Epstein, Epstein, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's always complicated with those American <laughs> names. But yeah, he did take down his control deck and is in top 4. He will face another control deck, so we decided to not stream him for the moment. Um, so we went to the other side of the bracket where ETL managed to take down um, Kevin Kruger uh, with his ADP deck versus um, Kevin's um, ability Zard deck, which we saw earlier. So we will see ETL's AB, AB, uh, adp -zation. <laughs> that's what it's called. It's so popular that I'm already forgetting the name. And yeah, <laughs> he's facing... Yeah, he will be Sorry, facing. Go. Oh yeah, he's he will be facing Dominic, who's been completely dominating this tournament. He started 12-1. He went 5-2 in day two, made it into top eight as first seed. He won his top eight game. Now we had a little downtime because um, Dominic faced a mirror match, a control a mill mirror match in top eight. So that took quite a bit. Was decided eventually by timeout after three extra turns. Dominic was the player that was ahead on prizes, so he won by prizes. Um, in game three. Pretty exciting games. Um, he streamed them on his own YouTube, so maybe you can check that out. However, now we are going into top four with ETL versus Dominic. Ability, uh, abilities are ADP Zation versus um, Macago con uh, Chinchino Control, not Macago Control. And yeah, we will be, this round will be commentated by me, Philip Schultz, and I am joined by Freya Pierce. Hello everyone, uh, thanks uh, again for joining us for this uh, yeah, top four match. Um, again, excited as ever to uh, see what this match brings to the table. And um, yeah, it's also really cool to see that um, really uh, almost all of the you know names that made it into the top eight, uh, yeah, apart from maybe Ross Corfin, you know, a lot of the names are perhaps names that we haven't seen in top eights before. So it's really cool to see uh, you know, new players rising to the top and you know getting their time in the spotlight. Yeah, definitely. We also got even senior players in top eight, which is, of course, an amazing accomplishment. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it reminds me of like you know the Klasinski Open back in the day, where uh, you had the you know, uh, I want to say uh, Lex Andrea or uh, in the finals. It was Ross against. Um... I'm not sure who the opponent was. The opponent was a seniors player, I believe, and he took yeah. Ross in the finals, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, Ross seems to be quite quite apt at these uh, yeah, alternative tournaments to the official circuit. And yeah, he's in top four again, really good and doing really well. But for our game between Dominic and ETL, who do you think is uh, in the favor here? Who would oh, be your well, favorite I, I, to win? Well, I mean, you gotta give the favor to you know to to Dominic, right? Considering how dominant he's been so far, you know, I think I've just on that almost on that basis alone, I gotta give gotta give it to him. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, also the control, the mill stall, uh, the mill deck. Wow, I'm getting so confused by all of these <laughs> different kinds of annoying your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he Dominic is focused on milling, so it is a mill deck, and yeah. This, and we've seen other mill decks, either with Chinchino or with Mercago, pretty much dominate this tournament, taking the first seeds in all four flights on after phase one, and then all of those four players also made it into top eight. So amazing performances here, and Dominic is certainly going to try to extend that. However, ETL is going first, and yeah, he already has his ADP and an energy. He has... Um, uh, switch already ready for turn two, so it's looking like a decent opening. He doesn't have a great supporter right now, and um, yeah, it's also certainly not perfect to with Station in the early turn. No, it's not. Yeah, and there we go with the uh, um, as we pass on the Dominic's turn, we do see there the Lily's Poker Doll, so uh, they will it's good to get, get that down early. Great Ball, uh, what, what was after Great Ball? I just missed there. Is oh, it... I missed that as well, but he also has a quick ball discarding a Station always. Um, yeah, you can do that since he already has one on board and if one gets knocked out he usually doesn't want to put down another one because that would give ETL an easy way to take six prizes by just taking out two Zations after early yeah. creation. Yeah, so in the in the meantime, I've yeah, dug through quite a decent few bits of cards already. Uh, a couple of energy hitting the discard pile uh, off of the level of Bryson Man, so 
you know, it's good to get rid of more energy resources, although it does mean that there's now a metal source alive, which, funnily enough, uh, is uh, just drawn there. <laughs> yeah, however, uh, without any metal Pokemon, the metal source also won't do that much. Of course. Yes, that's that's true as well. Now, ETL debate, debating with his pretty poor hand, admittedly, thinking about what to kind of put on top on his deck. Of course, if he wants to top deck something for the next turn, this is like the correct sequencing. However, getting the catcher not the perfect card to get there. I, I, I guess he has to discard his. Ma he almost has to discard the metal saucer here. And yeah, of course, important to use the primate wisdom before the Guzmahala because when he has, um, he can shuffle that card back, and then he has the chance to top deck something in the next turn. Yep, and uh, there it goes with the Guzmahala. Going to grab it. Looks to be an air balloon. Aurora Energy and can grab a stadium as well, although I don't see any, so uh, just going to be those two for now. <laughs> yep, really quick deck search there, not uh, not taking too long on that. Um, yep, sending up his ADP, he doesn't have too many options, so he's going for the Altered Creation quickly. Yeah, which is obviously still, you know, it's still a good turn for me. Uh, Altered Creation Jax is so important to, you know, fire off early against these uh, mill archetypes just because you want to be able to win the game as quickly as possible. The more time, the more extra turns you give your, the mill opponent, the more turns they have to dig through their resources and to run you out of cards in your deck by discarding them. So it's, uh, you know, shortening the game clock by firing off that Altered Creation GX is very, very important. Yep, and here we see Dominic's approach, approach of the matchup. He's playing Energy Disruption. He's playing Crushing Hammer. We already saw Yael yeah, Goran hit his discard pile. There's lots of different approaches to his deck. Some people play Memory to put their opponents to sleep. So we've seen um, the Crushing Hammer version as well. Um, and yeah, Dominic seems to be making a case for Crushing Hammer, Yael yeah, Grant combination to be the best. However, he yeah, he didn't manage to flip heads, and that's always the big downside of those flipping cards. Yeah, yeah, it always is. So. On goes the Metal Energy onto the, onto the ADP, uh, then just going for the Ultimate Ray, no knockout of course, uh, and then uh, just going to be able to attach some Metal Energies, uh, but I don't really know if there's anything he'd want to attach to at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, he can attach to his Oranguru. Um, oh, okay, he said he's just going for his ADP. Uh, all in, I guess. <laughs> Two energies there, which seems like an interesting choice since, uh, yeah, it won't have that great of a time attacking, but I guess what he's focused on is just thinning out his deck um, as quickly as possible to because he wants to draw more cards and he doesn't want to be stuck with his, his hand forever, so he just yeah. opts to thin out those metal energies to not draw into yeah. them. In fact, maybe he's thinking he just wants to literally ride by the whole game using um, the Arcus Dalgrim Power Gear. If he could just like load this up with energy and uh, you know pick off um, these uh, Chinchinos, uh, you know they're all, all of them will fall victim to an ultimate ray attack. So as long as uh, you know either the colored energy in form of like the unit or the Aurora energy stays then it's actually not the worst game plan uh, in the world at all. Yeah, but there's like no reason for Dominic to remove the metal energies. He can just focus on the um, special energies, get rid of those, and once he removes like two or three, then, Domin then um, ETI won't be able to attack with ADP anymore because he doesn't have oh, yeah. water energy. So. Yeah, that is a very good point. So, so yeah, I guess uh, with that in mind, uh, Dominic is able to uh, get down a couple of Chinchinos. Starts starting to, with those, you know, make do to just draw extra cards. Of course, uh, Zorak GX is no longer around, so we have to make do with uh, Chinchino instead. No, no one. <laughs> um, oh, I'm, I'm going to get slated for that so much in the chat. <laughs> And yeah, um, I was just confirming, ETL only plays one Aurora energy and one unit energy. So once both of those are gone, his ADP won't be able to attack anymore. Oh wow, okay, I didn't realize it was uh, that low account. So yeah, maybe perhaps a slightly risky strategy. Oh, but there's the heads on the Pokemon catcher, absolutely huge. Yeah, it's really Ooh. nice. If you can take out the Station V in the early game, that just makes it so much harder for the, uh, for the control deck because in that situation, they don't want to put down their. Um, they don't want to put down another Zation because if you just power up um, your own Zation V, and then you just need one more Gust effect, and you can take out the Zation for another three prizes, and you win the game. So it makes it that much easier. 
But so it yeah, is, exactly. Yeah, but also foregoing that station means that you lose so much draw power. So great knockout here from um, ETS side. Also finding the station out of his prize is also really oh. helpful. Yes, that's really, really good. So now when he inevitably does another ultimate ray, you can, uh, you know, start attaching metal energies to that, uh, to that uh, Zassian V instead and actually have a backup attacker going. Now, looks to be another make-do from uh, from Dominic's side. It's guarding a Simeon and Caitlyn, drawing two cards. Got been through quite a bit already. Uh, but we see there now the uh, power pad shuffling in a couple of supporters. Um, and then... Um, is he just having a you know, quick look at you know, what's been going on exactly just so to make sure he's has an exact awareness of um, Dominic's current game state. That's a great ball. Finds another Zastrian V. Yep. So that is a good find, but does he risk benching it? That is it goes back to what you were saying earlier. It could be a big risk if he does. Yeah, for sure. He also he already has two Chinchino on his bench. And yeah, so he's deciding that those Chinchinos will have to, to do. Yeah, well, he has already has three. So that's quite a lot of draw power, even with authorization. And he just doesn't want to risk having those free prize Pokemon sitting on the bench. However, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. Ooh. However, not able to find any crushing hammers. Um, also, let's see if he does play a Faber. Or oh, nope, I don't. I don't see a Faber. He only plays two Team Yell Grand and four crushing hammers. So a Faber. Oh, okay. Yeah, Faber would have been really useful in this particular scenario. Yeah, no kidding. Instead, uh, goes for the tag call, grabs Sylvia Caitlin and Blob of Rice Man. Oh, but there's Lieutenant Surge's strategy, so could be, yeah, some mill shenanigans coming up here. There's the Blob and Bryson Man. Uh, mm, was there anything important discarded there? It's hard to tell. I don't think so, but um, mm -hmm. I guess uh, what Dominic would like to see are some energies because um, ETL already has a lot on his board. So if he can manage to mill some more metal sources, some more energies, that would definitely make it pretty hard for ETL to keep attacking consistently. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, however, as long as those special energies stay on the ADP, he is totally fine and can just keep attacking with that. And another yeah. question from Mateus. Oh, yeah, the, the Dominic's getting a little bit unlucky here. This is exactly what he doesn't want to see, because now, with all these crushing hammers failing, all uh, Itiel needs to see is he has some gusting effects, and, I mean, he's already guaranteed a knockout this turn by virtue of uh, having a double custom catcher, and he's uh, drawn the metal energy as well, so he can put that to the Zassian. Ultimate Ray, uh, the other one on, uh, yeah, brings up the Chinchino, opting for opting for the one that looks different, just because, just because he can. Um, yep. And yeah, the interesting thing about the, about Dominic not playing Faber is that ADP has been shifting a lot to builds that focus on um, basic water energies. So the Guzmahala build has been falling off quite a bit. Not that popular these days anymore. So it makes sense to cut the Faber and instead play Crushing Hammers to be able to remove those water energies. And yeah. Yeah, in the beginning of the middle deck, it was usually Faber was a really great find early on. So the Macago version, for example, had the advantage of just being able to find that Faber and remove the special energy on turn two, for example, to get rid of that and to prevent ADP from ever using Ultimate Ray. So, are there? I, I'm not sure if I just was missing it, but I didn't see any custom catchers left in Itiel's deck. Hmm, yeah, that would definitely be huge. Um, Is it because obviously the great catcher isn't much help here because there's no yeah. GXs on on side of the field. Uh, yeah, oh, there, oh, there's three custom catchers in discard. Oh no. Yeah. However, ETL also plays four not regular Pokemon catchers, so those would definitely be um, pretty huge as well if you can find a heads there. We've seen last ge last round um, Ross Cotton in his top eight flipped a lot of game decide a lot of pro potentially game deciding tails. Managed to win in the end anyways, but I think he had like four coin, four Pokemon catcher coin flips that could have been heads and won him the game. And yeah, yeah. ETL might end up in the same situation here. Yeah, that is very true. So, yeah, ETL has having a very careful look at what's, um, at what Dominic has left as uh, Dominic with his power pad, just to pick it up just like a little bit more. And he got three cards in deck currently, he doesn't want to you know, fall victim to his own win condition and accidentally mill himself out, but... Oh, just a, just a pass there. So, oh, and um, is he not even risking it? Just gonna go for the uh, 
go for the ultimate ray and uh yeah not fancying trying to you know dig for the pokemon catcher with the dead energy x just yet yeah for now etl is in a really comfortable position he doesn't really he has a lot of cards in his deck he only needs one pokemon catcher heads at some point or maybe get rid of all the poker dolls that dominic has and yeah if he just keeps attacking that's also already great because of course Dominic um, only has access to a maximum of four poker doll. Two are already in the discard pile. So if ETL just keeps attacking, Dominic will be forced to use resource management to get those back. And of course, he cannot afford that anymore. Since yeah, if he does yeah. that, ETL just wins the game by taking a knock on. Oh, that's a Pokemon catcher milled off the Balabo and Bryson, man. So that's all I'm gone. That's like, yeah, three, four catcher and three custom catcher gone. Oh, very oh. unfortunate with that many cards in deck, but will it be enough? Because Dominic, as I said, he can't, he cannot afford, and yeah, he's just scooping the game. He realizes that he didn't, he couldn't finish this game without using resource management, and he couldn't allow him to use resource management because the tier was down to a single prize. So yeah, it's yeah. Looked like he had a bad opening. He stumbled a bit there in the early game, but just being conservative and attaching an energy per turn was enough to win the game for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's like um, it's yeah, taking the early lead here as we go on into game two. Um, got to be, got to be smiling about that. I mean, Dominic needs to sort of like regroup and try to, you know, make make this comeback here. Having starting one game down, obviously not really ideal. <laughs> And now players figuring out who wants to go first. Okay, Dominic is opting to start. Makes sense because there's no reason not to go first against ATP. Uh, except if you're facing Bert Walters. If you face Bert, then you might want to go second just to make sure um, that you don't get donked. <laughs> because we've seen Bert do it countless times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Opponent going first, only having one Pokemon not being able to play a support and then Bird goes in with a turn one um, Brave Blade for the knockout. So, All right. this looks to be a mulligan there. Yep, mulligan's always helpful. Mm -hmm. However, oh, not the greatest hand. And yeah, so let's see. Dominic has uh, Lily's poker doll here at least, so at least he won't get donked. Another one already opening with Physician V, which is of course really good because this is like the heart of your engine and last game it just yeah last game um it got a bit awkward because he lost it early on but it was also mainly because it got stuck in the active and then it, it was an easy way for etl to draw free prizes yeah exactly and Girachi not finding not finding much of anything much of anything at all so uh yeah. yeah, there's a lot of uh, resources to discard there for ETL. I don't really think he... It, it might be that he kind of has to, but doesn't really want to. Yeah, that's a really, really ugly uh, dead, dead age change to have to do. Yep, so many cards gone, and wow, still not too great. I mean, he has a quick board, so he can just discard his Jirachi, find him an ADP or a Zation. Depending on what he prioritizes, play the money and try to find an energy that way. So, pretty decent hand, but... That of course means that he has to play more cards, and every card that he plays is a card less that Dominic has to mill, of course. Yes, absolutely, and uh, that's exactly the issue. Now, it's also interesting to see whether uh, he opts to go for the Primate Wisdom here, which he does. So, opts to put the Pokemon Catcher on top, finds a switch, that's pretty good. So, oh? Just opting to not use it for now, but he does find the metal energy. So yeah, no re no reason to use switch yet because he can't. Uh, he doesn't have the two energies to use his GX attack for now. That makes so, sense. Yeah, so he, he wants to the... be a quick ball here, and he can find himself a Zation. So that's pretty much perfect for him. But he as said he had to discard a lot of cards this time. Last game it was just energy pass. You go. <laughs> And yeah, here we see he's just making sure that he's taking, uh, that he's very much aware of what resources he has available. He sees that his Aurora energy is priced, so he will only have that one unit energy. And knowing that Dominic plays a high, high amount of crushing hammers, 
He should this time definitely opt to charge up his Asian. And yeah, now it's on to Dominic to maybe, maybe he, yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, maybe he can find a Yale Grind a bit faster this time, because he plays them in addition to his four crushing hammers to prevent that altered curation for as long as possible. And yeah, Yell Grind in combination with Station V is just so strong. Being yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah, every turn that you win is another free cards that you get. So that's really powerful. That's a stellar wish. Finds uh, one custom catcher. Um, opts to take it, so potential risk there if uh, there needs to be a professor's research play later on, but I have to take the risk for now. And, oh! Uh, he forgot to use Intrepid Sword. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> uh, anyways, Dominic now. He has a relatively low amount of cards in his hand, he finally finds um, another quick ball to get him another Mancino. For now, for the moment, he only had this one ditto. So, not too like this game already took a couple turns, but his board is not um, that developed. However, now Cynthia Caitlin being able to draw him a couple of um, additional cards. Team Yelgrand also a really good pickup, so he can use it next turn to prevent the um, ultimate ray for. At least one turn. Another Machino, also great. Um, and yeah, he will finish it off with an Interpret Sword. And hopefully finding some Chinchino soon. Yeah, so, and now yeah, it's on so it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, back to, back to him. Uh, the Jirachi stays asleep, but it doesn't matter, of course, for, for the Stellar Wish. Um, yeah. He might be able to... I don't know, he really just wants to find a, yeah, a Guzma Hala, exact. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what he was looking for. Guzma Hala or Tag Call was what he needed. And now he will be able to find a skateboard and special energy to use auto creation and get himself going. Um, Dominic, of course, already sitting with his Team Yelgun in his hand to be able to prevent him from attacking afterwards. But yeah. But still, and using the unit here is pretty great. Um, Aurora energy, uh, the interaction of Aurora energy and Team Yelgon is also kind of interesting because you always have to discard an additional card when you remove it. So basically, um, Team, Yelgra Team Yelgon on Aurora energy is like remove an energy, um, set your opponent back a turn and also remove a hand card. But yeah, on both the unit, that's of course much more convenient for ETL. Yeah, and also also creation jacks obviously pretty big there. Good that uh, he was able to find that. So now he can you know, carry on with, with uh, his you know, his normal game plan, which is to just you know take take free free knockouts before uh, the, the opponent can uh, run him out of cards. So starting off with like make dues again now. Um, yeah, and he's Dominic got three chinos. <laughs> and Dominic just putting down three chinos exactly <laughs> out of his hand <laughs> before even make doing. So great setup. And yeah, he definitely wants to find um, an air balloon sometime soon. Because he doesn't want allowed ETL to get a free hit into his um, station again. Yeah, that would, that would obviously be uh, be far from ideal. Now, uh, it's like grabbing a Mew off the quick ball. Yeah, probably just Another to throw it away. Exactly yeah, not much. very... Not very useful in this matchup at all. Um, <laughs> so good, yeah, yeah, good, good discard father. There's his crushing hammer. Oh, but tails again from Dominic. Yeah, those, ha those hammers have not been going too great for him. Team Yagon probably removing the metal. Oh, he's going for the special energy. Interesting choice because usually I would have expected him to leave it on the board because he wants to get rid of it. So if he draws into crushing hammers next turn, then he could discard it. And now ETI can just attach another metal energy to his ADP and save uh, um, unit energy for when he will be able to attack with ultimate ray but probably not too impactful of a choice yeah so there's the primate wisdom uh once again gonna be able to put back uh get yeah, a great catcher not very useful right now um yeah right now is good <laughs> <laughs> yeah not very useful in this matchup and yeah very similar no. metal energy 
And yeah, until now, debating on whether he should use Interpret Sword, but decides not to because he doesn't want to go through his deck. And he basically has all the cards he needs in his hand anyway, so might as well wait and not ne un draw unnecessary cards. Yeah, of course. Now, uh, some more make deals coming from Dominic's side. It's, like we said, he's got three Tinchinos out, so he's able to draw six cards per turn, which is uh, incredibly solid. Yep, still no air balloon for. So Station no. V Station V seems to really like the active spot, just chilling there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really does just uh, you know, sort of facing off with a giant sword against, you know, free free uh, sort of, you know, time space and uh, sort of universe Pokemon I guess. Yeah, chilling chilling in the active position until it gets forcefully removed. <laughs> mm-hmm. So so there's another Yell Grunt, obviously putting back one of the two Metal Energies. Yep. It's a pretty, pretty good tempo move, obviously. Yeah, Team Yell Grunt is funny. It's one of those that, you know, at first look, it doesn't really seem that impactful because the opponent isn't really losing anything as such, but just the tempo of you know, losing an energy attachment can often be really, really huge, as we can see in situations like this, because now um, uh, Itiel is prevented from using uh, the Rose Array. Yeah. yeah, for another turn. And Dominic now starting to attach energies to his Station V, not being able to find an air balloon, but maybe he will be able to retreat manually instead. So we are probably yeah. just attaching and passing here. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, there's the retreat. So this time, no free hit into the Station. Having two Lily's Poké Doll on the board is also always important to prevent Fion. Um, however, ETL also doesn't play Fion, so he only plays four catcher, four custom catcher, which should be plenty anyways. Yeah, so there, oh, oh, Crushing Hammer's coming down now. One, it ends up being a Tails, and then another one coming down. This one, oh, that was a Tails as well. <laughs> yeah, this is, oh, where no. it, this is where it could have really mattered um, that Dominic earlier chose to remove to move the unit energy back to the hand because if he had hit heads on those and had the unit energy on board, then he could have prevented ETL from using ultimate ray at all in this game and basically this ADP those attachments into the ADP would have been completely useless. So yeah, the bad flips for Dominic, however, not um, making it so that this m m slight misplay will not be punished. Mm -hmm. So, yes. I mean, uh, so Dominic's gotten to the point where he's done so many make dues, he's literally drawn his entire deck. So that's the, also drawn the last crushing hammer there. And Another wow, tail. That's like the six tails in a row. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that is insanely unlucky from from his side. Yeah. Uh, got, yeah, got to play. Yeah, got to play down the power pad just to get, put some Team Yelgrunts back into the deck. Team Yelgrunt, interesting choice here. Um, usually, when controls, uh, when Will's at the point where he, uh, where it um, is very low on deck cards, it starts to go for mill because then the Blabber Bryceman has virtually no drawback, and then you can just use them and put them back into the hand. However, um, Dominic going for um, Team Yelgrunts here tells me that he's probably going to go for resource management as well. And uh, no, just putting a Lily's Poké Doll. Uh, oh yeah, just putting Lily's Poké Doll on the bottom of the stack to not go Jackpot for one more turn. Mm -hmm. There's another primate wisdom putting back a tag call, which is very useful right now. <laughs> Eventually, uh, Itia will be able to attach a third energy and do this also, and to sort of keep attaching energy until they let him. Yeah, yeah. This game was just yeah, grunt, mm, attach pass, yeah, grunt pass. Mm, att so not a lot going on so far. However, Dominic already down f his four crushing hammers. And yeah, not much. That's ETL still at 18 cards in his deck, so he will still need quite some time to win this. Yeah, there's a lot more milling to happen yet. Um, Dominic now sending up a Chinchino. And just passing. And uh, with that, uh, he, uh, Itia will finally, finally be able to use Ultimate Ray and take it, take the first knockout of the game. Yep. 
Interesting Chinese to send out Virgin Chino. Hmm. And not go for something like a resource management. But yeah, he probably. Hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. I think at this point here, you just take knockout because you want to save your you know your gusting effects for when you do want to take your free knockouts that you need to win. Oh yeah, on so, each side for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's just and also knocking out the Gucino, it's still it's one less you know, draw power card that the opponent has access to, so it's a good knockout regardless. Obviously, knocking out the Onguru is slightly more effective in the sense that it stops the resource management shenanigans, but I think this is still absolutely fine. So, yeah, there's the ultimate ray. I'm um, going to find the one metal energy still left in the deck and uh, probably going to attach that to... Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be either the active or the uh, or the Zacian. Yeah, no point in attaching to the active, I've, I guess. I mean, he can draw out... He can draw his Aurora energy out of the prizes, but if one of his energies gets removed, then it's probably the unit, and in that case, he can't attack with the ADP anymore. At least yeah. for a moment. But yeah, he's going for the active, anyways. I'm not quite sure why, but I'm probably missing something. So let's power pad just to make sure that the deck doesn't run out of cards and then make do just to draw them again. So if he's doing that, I've got to assume that he has a way of putting cards back before the end of the turn. Oh, he's on the least poker doll, so he, yeah. can, he can never actually deck out. Yeah, also I'm pretty sure it's about time for him to use resource management. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, he oof. removed six cards from ETL's uh, deck, so... Um, with the right resource management, he should be able to... Be in a position where he can win next turn. Oh yeah, actually that, that's true because uh, that's been yeah that's a recycle energy. Um, ten cards left in deck means that you know he's going to draw over turn and then that's going to be nine cards left in deck and that is uh, going to make it very easy to do double the Elba Bryson man plus uh, Mewtwo for the win. Yep, putting down another Lily's Poker Doll just to make sure he has less cards in his deck if he get money yep. and going for free power pen. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. So, yeah, ETL, not much that's going on. He could maybe go for like a switch and try to find Marnie, but um, he's only playing one copy, so that might yeah. not be the most desirable play. Yeah, I, I, the more that I see it now, the more I think that actually Dominic's probably got this on, on lock because, uh, yeah, there's going to be uh, a KO here. And that'll be two prizes, but I'm fairly sure Dominic has everything he needs to just uh, mill the last nine cards and win the game. Yeah, that, that of course depends on whether he um, his Mewtwo is priced or not. That's but that's true. He has the Macargo in his discard pile, so he ha has access to Burning Magma if he can get a Mewtwo and an energy. He shuffles back to Fire Energy. And... Yeah, he's still not guaranteed. Uh, yeah, he's basically guaranteed to get to get the fire energy uh, with Chinchino. Yeah, and uh, Itty already saying, uh, oh, if you have game, I'll go, I'll go first for game three. Kind of like assuming that uh, he's probably lost here. There's the double make do power pad. Yeah, I'm not too sure if he actually has it. He doesn't have any make dos anymore, and he still needs. Oh, okay, he has a tech call. Okay, so that, sh that should uh, yeah. be it. Yeah. So he, if he has Mewtwo and Surge, he definitely has a fire energy in a sense. As for Surge. Yeah, I mean, he's playing yeah. He's playing as if, you know, he's got it. So you have to assume, I think. Yeah, there's Belalba number one, Belalba number two. So all we need to see is the Mewtwo and the fire energy, yep, which we see there. Is. And yep, that's the game for Dominic. Dragging this game out just enough to be in a position where he can win comfortably. Um, ETL only having one money in his deck hurting him a bit. We've seen players like Todd Radcliffe play an amount, a huge amount of four money, so that would have been really good in this matchup for ETL to like shuffle his, uh, to put his hand back into his deck and to disrupt his opponent. However, um, ETL's build also looking really strong. It's Looks very similar to what Medi Afi, ha, Medi Afi used, Medi Afi used to make finals at the Mime Regionals. However, his name is properly pronounced. 
Um, yeah, so I really like that build as well. I think it's very versatile and um, very strong. Um, yeah, and ETL definitely making a case for it, being in top four here out of um, a thousand competitors. And yeah, now he's absolutely. starting game three. Yeah, absolutely. So both um, both players starting with uh, with Zassian, Zassian Vs. Uh, ETL going first, having chosen to having lost the second game, starting off with a tag call. So <laughs> there's only two choices, so I imagine we'll probably get both of them. Yep. But got to take a good look at what's priced first. And also, um, yeah, he doesn't have an energy yet. So this is not great. Uh, like, I mean, it's not the end of our world, but it's also not amazing, especially since we know that Dominic is playing a high amount of energy disruption. So if ETL is falling behind here, then Dominic will have more time to draw into his crushing hammers, into his yell grunts, and maybe he will eventually flip ahead on a crushing hammer. So, yeah. There's a there's a tag call. Yeah, not not much exciting things gonna happen here. Just gonna pick up his ADP, deciding to leave uh, Kuzmahala in his deck, probably thinking that he will use Professor's Research next time. Oh, actually, I guess he's going for the Dana here. So oh, yeah, certainly, certainly looks that way. Yeah, doesn't want to give Dominic more time to draw into his energy disruption. Deciding that he's not doesn't need any of those cards. And where's the metal would energy? You, would you not play down the chaotic swell just because you can? Uh, I mean, he does know that um, Dominic doesn't play any stadiums, so there's no okay. need to. Might yeah, as well I guess so. Yeah, because both players, of course, have access to their opponent's deck list, so. Yeah. So. <laughs> now it seems like. Yeah, go, go for the Intrepid Sword, Magic Hit 1 Metal Energy, which is pretty good, and then draw an extra two cards as well. And now we're going to head over to Dominic Cern, who always oh, got Fire Mouth for Crushing Hammer straight away. Can he maybe get lucky this time? And yes, yes, finally! And was, <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that um, ETL had the classical early game dilemma against Mill, where you get an energy of Intrepid Sword, and are not sure if you want to attach it, and I would have, I think I would have preferred ETL to keep it in his hand exactly for this situation, where Dominic gets the Crushing Hammer heads, and now, if ETI wants to attach an energy next turn, he will be forced to put on his Aurora energy, which is definitely not what he wants. Yeah, that's very true. There is a there is a Guzma Haller in hand, so I guess he could use that instead and then just opt to go for the unit energy. Yeah, the unit energy, however, just got milled, which is also very, very huge for Dominic. Getting oh, rid snap. <laughs> getting rid of one of ETL's two energies means that he only has one more special energy left. Yeah, wow, that's actually huge. So now, uh, like you say, um, ETL will be forced to play down the Aurora energy, and if this Aurora energy happens to go away, there'll be no alter creation happening, and if there's no alter creation happening, you've got, you've got to think that Dominic's pretty favoured. Yeah, for sure. Um, even but there for... it is. Yeah, even for ETL has a lot of um, gusting in this deck. If he can't use altered creation, that's going to be extremely painful. Yeah, because like it's just you're just not going to have enough time to you know take all those knockouts. You know, it's uh, going to be an agonizing, um, <laughs> an agonizing wait just to you know, take your six prizes uh, manually by knocking out six Pokemon. And if you're taking the time that you need to do that, you're probably giving your opponent all the time that they need to, you know, build up the resources to uh, run you out of cards in your deck instead because they'll just be able to play yeah, so many Blabbles and Bryson Mans. Yep. However, ETL, uh, Dominic not drawing much at all, um, only having Blabber Bryson Man, which is definitely not the supporter you want to use in the early game. Of course, pretty lucky with it one Blabber that milled a unit, but he would usually definitely prefer to see something like. Um, a Team Yell Grant or a Cynthia Catlin to develop his yeah. board a bit more. Also, yeah, definitely. Yeah, also no Minchinus yet, no did the Prism stuff for him. So uh, Dominic with a really bad board. Um, yeah, that's that's the good news for ETL. The bad news is he's still not seen another Metal Energy, and not only that, but he needs to dig for one right now. And by digging for that, he will need to go through a massive amount of uh, his gusting effect. He, you know, he would, we would be. Well, if you went for the, for the dead any, he'd be discarding 
you already discarded one Pokemon catcher. Chance that maybe discard another one and the custom catcher. He does opt to go for the Oranguru first, just to lessen that impact a little bit. So now he's only discarding like two Pokemon catchers essentially. Uh, so that helps a bit, I guess. Yeah, still extremely painful foe. And yeah, depending on what exactly to do, um, thinking about sending up for Zation, not the worst play by any means. Um, taking out for Zation V, it's the only draw that um, Dominic has on his board for now. So if he can take that out, and if Dominic didn't find anything with that, his last interpret sword, it's gonna be uh, yeah, pretty painful for him for sure. Yeah, that's true. So. Let's see if it works out. Yeah, that's Metal Energy, so actually uh, Etiel can just Brave Blade here and take the knockout, and um, Dominic better hope that he has a basic, basic Pokemon in his hand or a way to get one, otherwise this game's going to be over in two turns. Yep. There's a quick ball off the prizes, as well as a Guzman Hala. What does Dominic have? Uh, oh, he has, yeah. a, he has a Minchino, okay. Finally, a Minchino. Also, Lily's Poker Doll. And, and, uh, yeah, oh, and, oh, a, and a second station fee. So yeah, now Dominic's finally ready to get going. And if he can find a crushing hammer heads this turn, he could really punish that um, that aggressive station play very heavily. Yeah, he could. I mean, the one thing that is um, a little bit helpful though um, about sort of the situation is that because the because Dominic has now has now benched another Zacian V. It now means that um, essentially the alter creation almost doesn't matter as much because essentially it'll take it'll still take three more attacks to win either way, right? Either you um, you know do the alter creation and then you take uh, the wait no actually that's that's that, yeah that's... I mean if he he can take authorization once again but then afterwards yeah. he would still have to attack twice so but yeah alter creation. Yeah, it's it's basically the same if he takes out Zation and two one prizes, or if he uses um, Altered Creation and takes out any two Pokemon. But he would need one more Gust Effect if he doesn't use Alter Alter yes, Creation. Yes, so. yes, that, that's right. So with that yeah. in mind, we go back to Etiel's turn. He's got the using Primate Wisdom again, and he's decided to put back the Big Charm. Not a very useful card in this matchup, of course. Uh, finds another Zacian off of that. Not very useful either. Uh, and in fact, oh, he almost goes for the Intrepid Sword, decides not to. Uh, yep. he's actually, oh, just, yeah, just going to go for the tree, and uh, I guess he is going to decide to go to the Creation Room. Yep, completely, yep. completely understandable, you know, it's like, yeah. at this point, it's one, it's, it's an attack that gets you one turn closer to winning, so exactly. it's uh, very reasonable. And better use it as long as he ca still can. And also, like, mm -hmm. it's not like he has much other options in his hand. He's no su so basically no supporter, and not much else he can do. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dominic finally developing his board, getting to Chinchino down, and it's starting to look pretty good for Dominic, especially considering that ETL is already down to 14 cards in his in his deck. Yeah. So. That's the quick ball. Uh, it's got in the it's got in the Zashin V. Yep, finding an Oranguru just to thin out the deck a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now quick and then ball. quick, <laughs> yeah, it's guarding Ditto Prism. Not very, not going to be using that right now. Finds the Wob Wobbuffet, uh, the that stops the uh, Prism Stars from attacking or using their abilities. But that's also just gets discarded straight away. Another not very useful card, and. At this point, it's like a little bit tougher to call. I mean, the one thing that's worrying for Itiel is that he does only have 14 cards left in deck, so he's not that far away from being in the danger zone, essentially. But on the same token, he only needs to attack two more times to win. As long as he can find two more gusting effects, he should be good to go. Oh, although this Belalba and Bryson man might hurt that. Oh, there's a custom catcher in the discard. That's really big. Yeah. So that means there's only one gust left yeah because four of the pokemon catchers are gone so there's only three custom catchers left in deck yep that's huge yeah also it uh, also dominic is in a position where he can win on the next turn if he just gets the um finishing combo between because etl is now at 10 cards left in his deck running extremely low 
Yeah, I mean, he, obviously, he's, he's going to Marnie here, obviously, but uh, that's which will help him put outside the range of that. But yeah, he can't. He Ma basically can't do anything else because he doesn't have an energy to attack, and he doesn't have a switch to get his station active. So can't yeah. even retreat this ADP. Has to go for it. Doesn't even see the double custom catcher, so yeah. he does find the Gonna energy for so that helps. Yeah, yeah, he can go for the ultimate right here. Can play the tag call as well, go for the Guzman and Harlow, and yeah, we can see there are two custom catchers left in deck, but uh, that's not enough to gust twice, which is very, very unfortunate. Yep, also now that the money is gone, with 12 cards left in deck, is, um, yeah, Tom ETL won't be able to recover any more cards uh, into his deck. So 12 is now basically the final clock is starting for ETL. Yeah, it sure is. Metal Energy goes on to the active, yeah, Ultimate Ray, uh, Volcano Lily's Poker Doll. But, yep. but now Demix has, uh, <laughs> keep using the PTGO usernames, uh, Dominic rather, all he has to do is, uh, is yeah, just find, I mean, I say find one below when Bryce Amanda sent, he doesn't even really need to do that. He's got, you know, two turns to mill 12 cards, um, one of which, obviously, um, Itiel's going to draw next turn, so... You gotta think that he's in a pretty good position here. Yeah, for sure. ETL's early game was really awkward. He had to discard so many catchers and he had to use Didana twice, which was also very painful because you usually just want to use Interpreter to set up your um, hand because that doesn't waste any cards and then you can shuffle the cards that you don't need back with Marnie. And yeah, having to use Didana going that through a deck that quickly is definitely really painful and hurting ETL a lot. Yeah. The, the the one thing that um, Etienne needs to be careful, or one thing that Dominic needs to be careful about, is not being too greedy. I'm sure he w won't think about this, but you know, maybe he would have thought about, oh, let's just uh, you know go for the um, uh, let's go for the Mewtwo and the Burning Magma now, and then you know that, that then it just sort of gets it out of the way, and then my opponent just draws a card, and we can just pass, pass, win. But then that opens up the potential for the Zacian V to KO the Mewtwo. So yeah, no, Dominic doing the right thing and just. Yeah, being patient with it, he's gotten the one Belalbo and Bryson Man this turn, so that means that next turn all he needs to do is find one Belalbo and Bryson Man and announce Burning Magma GX for the game. Yep. And using another Interpret Sword, ETL still not able to find much of anything. It's a primate wisdom. I mean, this really needs to be a double custom catcher here, but even then, that won't, you know, get him that much closer to winning the game. It will get him closer to winning the game, but not close enough to actually win. Especially if Ralph don't, doesn't even find the second custom catcher anyway. Yep, definitely not what's he, what he wants to see. And usually attaching the skateboard and retreating here would be fine, because of all his energies are pretty much useless on the ADP. But since... Um, ETL doesn't have any free retreat, but it's also knowing, oh no, actually, yeah, he can just retreat to station next turn and switch again to get it attacking again. But yeah, the question is if there will even be a next turn, so. I I have my doubts. So, Oranguru gets sent into the active, we've got, it's got the air balloon, so that you know, can retreat for free. And there's a couple of make do's on the board, so all Dominic needs to do is, uh, as long as he's got the supporters in deck, which he's going to make sure he does with his power pad. Yeah, he's going to put back the Blabber and Bryson man, uh, both of them. Just needs to find one of them off of this, uh, off of these make do's, and then whack down the Mewtwo with the fire energy, and that will be the game. So, yeah, of course, yeah, make do number one. Of course, the Mewtwo can be priced as well, but even without it, um, if Dominic just is able to use, uh, to use Blabber Bryson man this turn. And then double Beleva Bryson Man next turn. Yeah, exactly. Both both enough. both work. So let's let's see what happens here. So the end. Makaga's in the discard pile. Oh, there's, there's the Mewtwo going down. There's for energy. There's, there's, there's for Beleva and that's for game. Yes, it is. So GG. The Dominic is continuing his absolute you know streak of domination yeah. as a uh, one here in top four making his way to the finals gotta be happy about that yeah incredible run for dominic making first seed in his pool
and then getting first seed after phase two and now he's into going into the finals um, even after flipping six tails on crushing hammer he was able to set up fast enough to slow the game down long enough and usually you would think that ETL is in a pretty good position to win this matchup because he has all those gusts um, to take prizes and then once he gets his Jigs attack going he doesn't need to do that much anymore um, yeah however he wasn't able to get going fast enough and he had to just burn through too many cards and the energy disruption in game the, the team here got thrown, slowing down the game two so much and then some crucial energy removals in game three uh, along with poor draws from ETL being enough to put Dominic into the finals so very exciting run yeah, yeah absolutely so we will be seeing uh, Dominic in the finals do we know yet who will be who he'll be up against uh, 